Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, my guest is Adam Donarski, and we're talking about esports networking, making industry connections. Welcome, Adam. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks, Catherine. So I think many of the, our viewers know what it's like when they, you know, put put their game down for a moment and think, okay, you know, maybe I could do something in the esports industry in my career. And how do I make those connections? Was there a time that you thought that? Yeah, um, for me, it was about a year ago today, actually. Um, just my wife ended up getting a job that we moved to Washington, D.C. for. And it's something that she's super passionate about in the sports industry. Um, and kind of seeing her develop that passion for um, sports and getting into that field, it really made me think internally what I wanted to do. And then I started looking a lot more deeply into different avenues that I could pursue within esports, which is something that I'm super passionate about. So um, just even as somebody who's been very involved in watching a lot of esports and competitive gaming, when you kind of get into it, there's a lot more opportunities available um, than I even realized when I first started digging into it. So where did you uh, relocate from? Uh, originally from uh, Crookston, Minnesota. Um, and then we, uh, I worked in Grand Forks, North Dakota, which is about 20 miles away from there. So um, right there in the upper Midwest, right next to Canada. Okay. So did you feel that Washington, D.C. was a better potential location for an esports career? I definitely did. Um, when I moved here, um, I thought, you know, Washington, D.C., it's kind of a melting pot. It's got everything. Um, but as I kind of dug into it, a lot more um, opportunities within esports um, that I found anyways, where Dallas is a huge hub um, anywhere down in Texas and like Los Angeles, California are a little bit more populated within the esports industry. But, um, you know, there's definitely opportunities out here that I found when I started networking within it. Um, Monumental has a 2K league and an NHL team. The Washington Justice is an Overwatch league team here in D.C. And then um, I'm actually interning at a place that does youth esports um, game gym. So those are kind of like the three major ones that I found in D.C. So. So, you know, I'm sure everyone's wondering and we'll provide the answer before we move on. Did you actually find a job in the esports industry? Yeah. So I. Um, Good news there. I just actually got a job offer that um, I am planning to accept when we get the contract all drawn up. So um, it's been a successful journey for me. Okay, so let's dive into that journey. What yeah. were, were your first? Well, let's let's talk about your background. So what you had to work with in terms of your skills. Where did you come from in your education and work experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I went to um, University of North Dakota, which is right in Grand Forks. Um, and I went from there to um, work for Pepsi, actually, um, full time. I've been there for seven years now. Um, so I started as a driver. And then about a year and a half in, um, I was kind of targeted when they switched their um, plant system. It was brought to a few more salesmen on the team and a little less uh, frontline workers or merchandisers, we call them. But so they added a couple of sales roles and uh, I was targeted from our plant manager as somebody who could excel in that role because I had already proven myself as a valuable asset on the delivery team. So I was able to move into that sales role and then I really kind of took off from there, um, was in that role for only six months until another opportunity came available in the same sales team there. Uh, sales relief is what that was called. So main main jobs there were covering um covering the sales routes when people were on vacation. And in that role, my plant manager at the time really kind of took me under her wing and showed me a lot of the logistics and everything that kind of went on behind the scenes instead of just the front line work. So that was a really important role in my development, um, just learning all that kind of goes into creating a sales deck, you know, building partnerships with different, uh, different gas stations and places within our territory that would be our business partners. So that was super rewarding. Um, and then I took that job um, 
to be promoted to a sales district leader, which is our territory's small format manager. So I oversaw six different people on our team. And just we, I took that over right in the beginning of 2020. So it was right at the beginning of COVID. So it was a tough time for everybody, but um, getting a whole new role and kind of getting tasked with a bunch of new things all at once, it was a lot to take in. Um, but we, we were able to improve metrics um, as far as servicing our customers and making sure that we were completing all the steps in our premier process. And we were able to increase sales um, across the entire territory that first year at the end of it, we do annual contracts and we were able to complete those annual contracts with 100% renewal rate across our territory in the fastest amount of time that we had ever done it in our plant's history. So that was a really impressing, impressive feat that we were able to kind of overcome as a team. Um, and then, so I was in that role up until we moved out here to DC um, just last August. And in that time, I was able to become the top salesman in our DMV area throughout our Columbia plant. Um, and currently in 2022, I had, my route is up 40% versus prior year in total volume. Um, and it equates to about 500, about um, positive in revenue from last year. So just a lot of really impressive things um, that I've been able to do in my career. And I was able to put that down on paper and, you know, be able to back it up on a resume. So um, really rewarding seven years and um, definitely something that I take a lot of pride in. So when you looked at your skills um, and how you had developed, what were what was your target in terms of the type of jobs that you felt in the esports industry that would where you would excel? Yeah, definitely. Um, the first thing that came to mind was brand partnerships and sponsorships, just because of my sales background, um, kind of building a relationship with customers, really learning you know, from customer one to two, what makes their business thrive and what makes this one thrive. So it's not just kind of a blanket statement or a blanket contract that fits everybody. It's making sure that you kind of sit down with the business owners and create that relationship and make sure that you're making the right business decision for, you know, myself and for your company as well. So brand partnerships was definitely something that stood out to me. Um, and then just a personal thing, gaming operations is always sounded like something that I would really thrive at. Um, so that's another area that I really targeted. And gaming operations just kind of includes that background stuff that I was kind of alluding to in my sales relief role that I kind of learned at Pepsi. And I really liked, you know, numbers and logistical things within, you know, routing and stuff like that. So within gaming operations, that's more of, you know, booking flights and getting hotels ready and making sure the players have their jerseys and stuff like that. So it's definitely a different different industry to get into. but um, I've networked with a couple of people that do that for their career and they say, you know, it takes a special somebody, but if that's what you want to do, then, you know, there's a need for it in the esports industry. So that's another area that I've definitely looked into as well. So Adam, how important is making connections and networking when you're looking to uh, enter a new industry? I think it's very important. I don't think, um, you know, obviously your background and your experience and your personality, all that kind of comes into play. But I think networking is something that's very, very important. And when I first started, I definitely underutilized. Um, and my wife actually was somebody who kind of brought me down that path to like realizing that, you know, using LinkedIn is a great tool, um, just getting connections and, you know, following up those people and making sure that you're staying kind of in their mind when when they know that, hey, this guy that I just met seems like a really great guy. He's got this impressive background. And I just heard about this job that came up. Like maybe that's something that I could send this person um, as a reference. So it's it's just those little things. And with something like eSports where it's kind of very tight knit community and it seems like a lot of people know everybody. Um, if you get your name out there and you kind of present, hey, I'm looking for this maybe at that point that person doesn't know anything that's available but maybe a month or a year later you're keeping up with that person and um, a role an opportunity comes available and they think of you because you've kept up that networking and that relationship sure you know linkedin is really fundamental to 
being a working person and a professional in any industry. Um, I started, you know, it's been years. I've, I started um, working on LinkedIn over 10 years ago and over time and a lot, putting a lot of time into it, I now have the maximum 30,000 connections and I had to actually just every single day work on it. And back then you were not allowed to connect with people you didn't know. And, but I did anyway, and I got kicked off quite a few times for doing that. I don't think they do that anymore, but um, now I think you can connect with anyone, but it was pretty interesting. It, it you know, getting, building that 30,000 was quite a, um, took many, many hours. And I would, I would say, when you look at my 30,000, I would say a lot of them are in the sports industry. More recently, I've added esports industry people. Um, and I've at, and when you get the limit, you actually have to start unconnect, unconnecting with people, so that you can keep adding to them. So it's kind of an interesting process and also keeping your um, information, your profile updated. But LinkedIn is amazing because you can put articles and so many things in there. You can write like, it's like a blog post. You can actually take classes on there and you can get certifications. Have you ever done anything beyond just the you know, kind of networking and connections part, Adam? Um, I just wanted to say it's a first for me hearing that somebody almost got banned or did get banned from LinkedIn. I didn't know that was a thing. So congratulations on that. That's pretty <laughs> impressive, I think. Um, but you know, I personally haven't done a lot of posting um, outside of, you know, just kind of like uh, updates on my life as far as kind of business goes. I try to keep that a lot more professional and just down to that. But I do know... Um, I just attended the ES, ESTA event in Chicago and I was speaking to somebody there um, who she said kind of at the beginning of COVID, she started taking articles that were being posted on esports and just saying, putting her two cents in, you know, reposting that, putting her little blurb on top of it. And she actually had people reach out to her trying to get into the esports industry and say like, hey, you're like an esports expert. Can you help me on this? Or what do you think about this? And she really was just putting her opinion down. And so when people started seeing that, it was just something that they knew that she had the finger on the pulse of. And, you know, that's another way that you can show that you're passionate about it and that you do know what you're talking about, because people are reading it, especially if you got, you know, 200 connections or if you got 30,000, anybody that you're connected with, they see that stuff um, when they're scrolling through so that they continuously see your name and see that you're giving your two cents on stuff. That's another great tool. Sure. And you know, what's interesting is that I have people message me um, on about esports. Um, and I, what I do in my response is, do you want to be on my show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to buy your product, but do you want to be on my show? And yeah. I've gotten a lot of guests that way. I, I don't really know how many, but maybe 50% of my guests are from LinkedIn. Um contacts and it, you know it works out pretty well that way um so let's move in you mentioned the ESTA esports trade association which i'm also a member and that's how i think i you ended up uh, being on the show is my connection with you on one of the happy hours um tell me how important do you think an association membership is in connecting with other people in the industry yes Absolutely. Um, very, very influential for me and important. Um, that was a kind of funny story. Megan Van Petten, who is the co-founder CEO, she's everything there. I mean, she's the MVP for a reason. Um, but she was somebody that I found on LinkedIn, just connected with her. And she said like, hey, yeah, I'd love to chat. Um, so I got a call, like, uh, call with her scheduled. And this was in late December. And I remember because I was home for Christmas. So I wrote um, on the way to see my wife's grandmother. So we were kind of head, heading out shortly after the call. But um, I remember specifically asking about the coffee connections, you know, just what kind of is that? And she just 
she just raved about it and said, you know, it's just an hour where we sit down and just introduce people. And that's really all it is. But it's, you know, the little things that come out of that are just, you know, they can bloom into something else. Great. Um, so that's the first thing I did was um, that following Wednesday was the first one that I attended in January. And I haven't missed one since. Um, it's every first Monday and then they do other virtual things throughout the week, throughout the months. Um, but that membership has been very important to me. My wife actually just became a member two, three months ago now. Um, but it's just great. Just meeting all the people that are in the industry, learning more about different roles that are in the in industry and what different people are doing. Um, it's just been a great, great tool for me to get to know more people. And then I've had, a, you know, a couple of people from there just reach out to me after the meetings and say, hey, I'm not sure if I have anything right now, but I would like to keep in touch. Maybe something will come up down the line. So, um, you know, the ESTA has been a backbone of kind of the things that I've used to keep up with people and keep my finger on the pulse, as to, as I've said a few times now, but um, just on what's going on in esports and kind of what people are doing and learning a little bit more about the industry as a whole instead of just the top level of professional gaming. You know, we got Freddie with Think uh, Think Techie, um, or Techie Factory, sorry, not Think. I got the Think Tech Hawaii on my screen, so that's what it came to, came up to. But doing a lot of things with kids, doing a lot of things in the collegiate space. Um, James Hess with Encore, they're doing a lot of events and lighting and audiovisual. So there's just so much within the esports space that I've learned through my membership at ESDA. Yeah, you know, you've just named about three people that have been guests on my show. Um, Freddie, James Hess, and Megan um, have all been guests. And, I, you know, definitely, I would have to say that's really valuable. In, in whatever industry you're in, look at what associations you can be a member of. But you can't just be a member. You have to actually be active in that membership. Um, you talk about go attending the virtual um, happy hour or no uh, coffee um, breaks or whatever. Unfortunately, they're 4 a.m. At, at my time. Um, but you know what, what I've got to do is I've got to rally and get up at 3.30 a.m. And, and attend one of those because I miss them. They used to have them. They used to have a like more of a happy hour one, which was later in the day. It was uh, late for you guys. It was still early for me, but that was really perfect. But, um, you know, there's another aspect of associations, and that is being involved and being a member of committees. I'm a member of the Education Committee for ESTA. Have you um, become a member of any committees, uh, Adam? Yeah, um, I was actually on the events committee um, up until about the middle of July because I at first, I wasn't going to be able to attend the ESTA event in Chicago. Um, so Megan was like, well, I kind of feel like maybe if you're not going to be attending the event, you won't want to be planning something that you won't be attending. Um, so she she kind of felt bad that I was like planning something so spectacular and then wouldn't be able to make it. Um, I didn't end up making it. But um, so I, I was on the events committee for three, four months. And then um, just recently, I got transitioned over to the membership committee. So um, just kind of started that one. We just had our very first meeting um, that I was a part of uh, a few weeks ago now. Um, so yeah, definitely to your point, getting involved um, and member, uh, the being a member is one thing that, you know, it looks great, but I think getting involved in, like I said, I, I've made every coffee connection, but maybe if you can, if it doesn't work out for your time, you end up having a meeting then. Um, just whatever you can do if you can pop in for 15 minutes say hello say what you're doing in the space and um you know get a quick connection that way and then catch up with that person later on um anything you can do try to stay involved is just definitely a great thing but the committees are you know above and beyond and um so far they've been very rewarding just learning kind of from all the brilliant minds in the space um especially on that events committee you know James Hess I mentioned him again but he was thinking about 10 different things when they were only thinking about one because he's done it so many times. So just getting that knowledge from people who have done it and are doing it at a very high level is um, another really great reason to join a committee. Yeah, you know, I've, I've learned a lot, lot from uh, being member, uh, a, a member of a association. Actually, 
uh, before uh, my primary association I'm a member of is International Association of Insurance Professionals. And I've been a member of that since 2002. And um, I've learned a lot about leadership. I was president, I was regional vice president and had a lot of opportunities and being on the board of directors and, you know, chairing different committees and uh, running meetings. It, you know, you gain skills from these associations that you may not be able to gain from working at a, a company and you can apply those skills uh, when you, um, in your job. Uh, and, and one thing that if, if you have high, um, you know, expectations and um, in terms of where you're going to be within the company that you are working, um, getting that boardroom experience and that leadership experience directly um, can uh, relate to um, the skills you'll need for those positions. Um, what what um, skills do you feel that you're gaining from being a member of Esports Trade Association? It's a really good question. Um, I would think, you know, just knowing that I'm not the expert in the room on all things um, and taking advice from everybody else within the room. Um, that's one thing that um, has been super helpful for you. You learn that this person knows what audio visual they're going to need at the event. And then this person knows how it has to be set up and just kind of taking all that information in and, you know, definitely putting in your two cents and trying to get your voice heard and showing different people that, you know, what you're talking about as well. But knowing that if you suggest something, maybe somebody else has a different way to do it. That is a better idea and making sure that you're kind of hearing everybody and taking everybody's voice into account, I think is one thing that has been, super, super valuable in being a part of the ESTA. And the relationships that you build, um, they can really be uh, turned into friendships and or business relationships. It's amazing. And then a lot of um, organizations um, have awards that they, um, you know, that they issue or opportunities like Esports Trade Association has that elevator pitch contest. So there's those kind of opportunities that you can't get in other places. But you've also mentioned that you've done an, or you're actually currently doing an internship. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, so I started, um, it's Game Gym. It's a local youth esports club here in DC. Um, they have a few different locations where they run uh, summer camps throughout the year. They also run a collegiate league, the MAEC, the Mid-Atlantic Esports Conference. Um, so last year they just did Rocket League and League of Legends, but this year they're adding Overwatch and Valorant. Um, so they run a bunch of different things. And their main thing that I got started on in February was their championship weekend in February, uh, the spring summit. So I came on about a month before that and I, I was tasked with building donations for that, which then they used and they donate to Children's National here in D.C., so they've been doing that for about three years now, I believe. And um, so I came on and helped that. We were able to raise over 4,000 for Children's National, which was awesome. Um, and then over that weekend, I actually was doing some social media stuff for them, um, doing a lot of clipping of the content. I did all the League of Legends stuff. So if you ever saw any of that on Twitter, that was all me clipping that. So it was kind of cool. That was my first experience with that. Um, and then lately... Uh, throughout the summer, I helped with their spring or their summer camps. So working with their camp, uh, their camp director, building their curriculum for their coaches. So basically, if you're a kid, usually ages like eight to 14 is kind of their target range. They um, they kind of bring you in for a week and it's basically a summer camp, but focused around video games, but not just sitting down and playing video games for eight hours a day. They do a holistic approach. They do a lot of stretching. They kind of get your mind right. Um, they have like little class sessions. So we did a few different um, ones that I kind of helped build up the curriculum for with the metaverse was one, just listening was one, just kind of some simple stuff, a little bit more advanced on other ones, but kind of depending on like the campers for that week. Um, and they really focus on gaming and helping kids game a lot more like I kind of said, holistically and making sure that they're healthy while they're gaming and 
Um, it's just been a super re rewarding experience. Um, the guys and girls over there are just super awesome to work with. And, um, you know, if I was a kid, summer camps for games just sounds like a perfect thing for me. So um, it was kind of a really easy fit when um, Josh reached out to me and asked me to kind of come on as an intern. Um, so I was very appreciative of that. And my whole time there has been nothing but spectacular. Uh, how much time have you devoted each week to that internship? Um, I would say a little bit less than five hours, probably. Um, it's It kind of varies. When I first came on and was doing the donations, building up to that, reaching out to people and trying to get the donations in for their um, spring summit, that was a lot more. Um, no, I mean, not a ton more, but that was pretty consistently about five hours a week. Now, lately, um, tracking sponsorship metrics and things like that is just kind of something that I do on my Sunday morning routine. Um, so it's just a couple hours a week. It's not not too overbearing. Sure. And the great thing about internships is you're not only gaining experience, but you're creating relationships. And sometimes an internship can turn into a full-time paid job or even a part-time paid job. So um, I see the value in that. But then there's also volunteering in the esports industry. Have you done that um, aside from your internship? Yeah, actually, um, Esports Insider was here in D.C., and it was through the Game Gym internship um, that I was able to volunteer at that event. Um, and that event was awesome. It was just super rewarding, super great to get to meet a lot of different people that a lot of them were in are in the ESTA as members. So that was kind of the first place I got to meet a few of them, as well as just um, other people that are in the esports space that I had never really met with before but had LinkedIn message before and just getting to know them face to face is just something that's um you know you can't really beat so that was super great they just asked game gym hey do you guys have any volunteers we'd like to get a few people to come work at our booths and work at our check-in desk um and I raised my hand right away um and that was one thing that I really really recommend to anybody kind of looking to break in um I know a lot of people say volunteering is a huge thing and if you can make it work um i definitely recommend it because i worked at the check-in desk and that was a great spot for me because i'm trying to get i was trying to get into the industry so i got to see everybody as i came in and introduce myself and say hey i'm adam Janarski from this where we message earlier or from esca coffee connections um so just being able to be in front of people was um very very rewarding so i was very happy to do that yeah, that's the the secret to be at the registration desk of any, when you volunteer, always volunteer for the registration desk if you have an opportunity to, or if you want an opportunity to meet a lot of people, or you volunteer for something where you know that everyone will have to come up and talk to you. So um, that's really clever. And you know what I found, and you kind of mentioned, alluded to this in relation to ESTA is attending conferences. Um, I, I've attended many conferences in different industries and it's a great way to meet people. And during COVID, there were a lot of conferences that were virtual and uh, now they have hybrid conferences. So you don't have to travel to the place. And um, when I can tell you that the first guest on this show in 2020 was um, General um, Major General Frank Muth um, of the Army, U.S. Army Esports, and I met him when he spoke at a virtual conference. Oh, awesome. So did you feel like when you attended the ESTA conference or other conferences that you were able to meet, make meaningful connections in the industry? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Um, I've attended three conferences in the last four months, I want to say. I went to PAX East, which isn't really a conference necessarily, but I took it as one, and I really focused on kind of hitting all the panels and the break rooms that did have esports uh, esports teams and um, just people in the industry in those rooms. So I was able to meet a few of the team members from Evil Geniuses, um, from the Boston breach. It, so I use that opportunity for there. And then, like I mentioned, the ESIDC and ESTA. Um, and then those panelists that were speaking at those just 
going up to him afterwards and kind of putting the name to the face. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that I recommend. Um, ESCA was able to meet with a couple of people that I had been messaging for and just applied and interviewed for a role within their company. So I think that's another way to set yourself apart is, you know, you have a resume that might look great, but when you kind of can present yourself in real real life, it just really changes their perspective on, you know, reading a few really good words about you and then seeing that, hey, this guy really is a really great person. I think he'd be a great asset to our team. So definitely 100%. Sure. And I met, I met Fatality, a, um, a uh, pretty famous uh, um, esports athlete. Um, at, when I spoke at a conference, we were on the same panel at Casino Esports Conference. And after our panel, uh, he showed me the, the virtual um, fishing pond and taught me how to fish. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's been such a pleasure, Adam. I uh, Congratulations on using all of your um, networking um, skill and making connections to get a job in the industry. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Um, it's been a very fast half hour and I really appreciate the time. And um, if anybody wants to connect with me or anything like that, definitely shoot me a message. I'm always willing to talk and see what other people are doing in the industry. Terrific. And uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be, actually, it's in two weeks, my guest will be Jamar Monta Hermoso. We'll be discussing partnering with government um, in promoting esports. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.